Conditions in California usually peak in the fall as far as fire goes, but this year authorities are urging everyone to prepare for a long and intense fire season. Raging on overnight, at least eight fires in San Diego County consuming home after home. The raging fires, a product of a dangerous mix, months of little rainfall and above average temperatures. Unprecedented number of fires and fire activity across the state, uh, in many cases two to three months earlier than normal. Some 2,000 acres have been charred so far, 1,000 homes are threatened. These are conditions we typically see late in the fire season, and as you know, this fire season is just getting under. Way. Firefighters believe they have the upper hand with the Monticello fire, but with changes in the weather, it could blow up again, or we could see more fires statewide. We are expecting thunderstorms up in the higher elevations and along the Sierra. We could see some dry lightning sparks, much like we saw in 2008. Fire crews have been in a desperate race to cut and backburn a line that is long enough and strong enough to protect the more than 3,000 people living and burning in the surrounding communities. Feeding on oxygen and a forest as dry as anyone's seen it, the King Fire marches relentlessly north and east. Cal Fire says over half the state's largest wildfires have occurred in just the last 10 years. Our summers are getting longer, they're also getting hotter. Now we've got the worst drought in state history and it's easy to see why Cal Fire is worried this could be a long and brutal season. California is well known for its scorching hot summers and mild winters, resulting in an ever-looming possibility of large and damaging wildfires each year. But something was different during the 2014 fire season. After three consecutive years of record-setting dry conditions, the entire state was critically dry and primed for one of the most destructive fire seasons in recent history. We're just asking people to be really cautious. It is such an unusual year. Uh, people aren't expecting it. This just isn't normal. What sticks in my mind the most about the fires of this last year, the wildland fires, is how fast they spread from their initial start because of the drought conditions. Like many other firefighters around the state, Cal Fire Battalion Chief Scott McLean was assigned to some of the largest wildfires in Northern California this year. He saw firsthand the extreme changes in fire behavior that took place over the 2014 fire season. This year, I was able to travel to most of the fires in Northern California, starting with the fire out of uh, Lassen National Forest on the west end outside of Cohasset. Then we went to the Butts Fire, and shortly after that, we jumped over to the Monticello Fire. Then we had the Eiler Fire, we had the Day Fire, the King Fire, the Sand Fire, the Bridge Fire. There's a myriad of different fires that took place stretching from January all the way through November of this year. The intensity of the fires was definitely heightened over last year. There are things that I've never seen before in my career, and I've heard other fire captains state that they've never seen this type of fire conditions before in their careers because of the wind and the fire conditions, the heat, and the uh, type of fire weather that was produced. One of the largest and most intense fires this year was the King Fire in El Dorado and Placer counties. The King Fire charred nearly 100,000 acres before firefighters were able to fully contain it, leading to hundreds of displaced area residents and making major news headlines all across the country. Overnight, the King Fire east of Sacramento doubling in size, now putting more than 2,000 homes in the line of fire. California's governor declaring a state of emergency as more than 3,300 firefighters battle flames fueled by dry brush and massive trees like this one. Cal Fire Staff Chief Joe Tyler served as Unified Incident Commander on the King Fire, working in cooperation with numerous other agencies to contain the massive blaze. We had a situation where um, we had wildland urban interface in this drought prone area in steep river canyons. All these factors, whether it be the wind or the tender dry conditions, was creating an environment where uh, the fuel was in an explosive condition. The King Fire broke Northern Sierra records not only for its size, but also for the speed at which it was able to grow, due in large part to the extremely dry vegetation. The King Fire, on the 17th, the media was reporting that it was making a run of 60,000 acres in 24 hours. The fact of the matter was that it made that run in six hours. And the King Fire is just one of thousands of fires that ignited in 2014. While firefighters were battling large fires like the King Fire, Cal Fire was busy extinguishing an average of 200 fires every week in the initial attack. 
fires fanned by seasonal winds, but made substantially more aggressive by the bone-dry vegetation scattered across California's landscape. This coordination center covers roughly the uh, southern two-thirds of the state. I'm tasked with providing weather information and fuels information to better assess fire potential. Robert Crone at the Geographic Area Coordination Center in Riverside, California, is one of several fire weather experts around the state who provides support and intelligence for wildfires and wildfire potential. We have been dealing with a very severe and long-lasting drought, which has covered pretty much our entire geographic area. Today, a snow survey crew with the Department of Water Resources reaffirmed what many up here already know. Well, clearly uh, not good news. Uh, January basically had, in many areas, zero precip. The, the current drought has been going on for three years consecutively. Three consecutive years is quite rare. Some estimates are that this type of drought has not occurred in 1,200 years based on tree ring samples. While the latest forecasts for California's 2014 to 15 winter season do predict a higher level of rainfall compared to last year's dangerously dry winter, Crone says that it's unlikely that California will see an end to drought conditions this year. It does look like we're entering a weather pattern which is much more conducive to precipitation, particularly during the vital uh, wintertime months. But I do think we would need substantially more precipitation than what we'll get this winter to end the drought altogether. It takes a while to undo the damage that three years of consecutive drought have done. By some estimates, we would need three to four hundred percent of average precipitation this winter to erase the drought altogether. Roughly two-thirds of our geographic area is under a D4 drought, exceptional drought, which is the highest category. Due to the extreme severity of the drought, it is unlikely to be undone in one a winter rainy season. You can take this drought as a stark warning of things to come. The United Nations Panel on Climate Change says with 95% confidence that human beings are changing our climate. Experts agree that California is experiencing a major shift in its overall climate, leading to longer and hotter summers. And it's the volatile combination of this climate change and the potential for continued drought that most concerns CAL FIRE Director Chief Ken Pimlot. Drought in combination with this uh, longer term climatic change is creating a longer fire season. In Southern California, we're experiencing year-round fire season. We saw conditions in midwinter, January, February, that were often you know, much later in the spring kinds of conditions. Northern California, the Central Coast, we were seeing conditions uh, in March and April that we would normally see in July. And because of this fundamental shift in California's fire season, Chief Pimlot says that Cal Fire remains alert and ready for potential major fire activity in the coming months. We're watching very closely to see what happens with the drought. We are not going to be lulled into the sense that recent rainfall, that the conditions are going to change overnight. So we are continuing to maintain base level staffing. We are continuing to be prepared to react. We are absolutely anticipating the potential to get right back into dry conditions. Well, I'm a water district official say today's rain is a good start, but it's not nearly enough to make a significant impact. So this is the time of year, uh, particularly with the rainfall that we've been seeing here in the last several weeks where people uh, very quickly forget about the kinds of conditions we saw in midsummer. So it's imperative that homeowners don't lose sight that the conditions haven't gone away in the state. Cal Fire is prepared for the 2015 fire season. We're preparing all year to be ready for the next season. Now is the time for homeowners and property owners to prepare. The public can make a very big difference in the outcome of wildfire in California. As Cal Fire's chief of public education, Dennis Matheson frequently sees the results of preparation during major wildfires like the state saw in 2014. Back in May at the Cocos Fire in San Diego County, we experienced several situations where residents had provided the necessary defensible space around their homes, which allowed us to protect those homes, and prevent them from burning. What we often see after the wildfire has gone through a community, those homes that have provided the necessary defensible space are still standing. And you may have a home right next door that was completely destroyed. We wanna make sure the public is armed with the information they need to be safe in their communities and get out when there is a fire, or even prevent one from beginning in the first place. 
Egypt with conditions much drier this year than previously, just about anything could spark. That's why local and federal fire agencies are warning the public with a new campaign. There are several resources that residents in California have available to them. Our website that deals with fire prevention, preventwildfireca.org, speaks to several ways that people can prevent wildfires. Most wildfires are started by some human activity. Therefore, we focus our messages on many of the activities that we find are the cause of fire. Readyforwildfire.org is a fantastic website to get a lot of great information on how to prepare ahead of time and how to address wildfires and evacuate properly when they happen. With well over 5,500 wildfires igniting throughout the year, 2014 brought some of the most destructive fire conditions in California's recorded history. And with the continued potential for drought in combination with the overall climate change to warmer, longer summers, 2015 is gearing up to bring its own set of challenges. The fire season of 2015 is not the same fire season that we saw 20, 30 years ago. Uh, in many cases, it's year-round or close to year-round in many areas of the state. So it is changing the dynamic. And as the dynamic of fire seasons in California changes, the people in California must change as well. From homeowners diligently maintaining their property, to residents and visitors taking steps to prevent new fires sparking, to emergency responders across the state staying ever ready for the next major wildfire, everyone can make a difference as California heads toward another potentially explosive year in 2015.